Murder solves everything. Can I? Oh, hi. We're back again to play some games. And it is Sunday, which means it's Sunday Seduction, a series on my channel where I play a random romance game. And today we have Imperial Grace. And as you can see, I'm dressed for the occasion because I'm an empress in this game. So the creator of the game actually hit me up and asked me to check out their game. Crown Empress after the death of your father, you must show the world that a woman is fit to restore the Clidia Empire to its former glory. Wisely manage your alliances, your kingdom's resources, and your heart's inclination to survive your first year of ruling. I can do that, I can do that, yeah, I got that. Clutch, got that. And I will be ruling with an iron fist. So anybody who messes with me, off of their head. Yeah, I'm that type of ruler. Let's start. Ooh. <laughs> I did not think that through. Um, I look kind of funny, but I'm Empress, so. Quiet. Um, normal mode, you will need to manage your resources wisely. Story mode, you will have infinite resources. You know, this is just a demo. So let's take a bit of a risk. Ooh, okay. Um, she's cute already. But we can change her. Do I like this hair? That's cute hair. That's cute hair. That's okay hair. It makes her look a little bit older. I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can change both eyes. But we're gonna keep both of them black. Um, army. Army and combat bonuses. Um, economy and mathematics. Ugh. Diplomatic and poison. Ugh. Religion and faith. We're gonna go with army. You know, I like me some combat. Oh, her name. Should we stick with Lauren or Naomi? Well, I'm already... I have the crown on, so... Why give it to Naomi? Lauren. I think we're good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Start. Your Highness. Your Highness. A panicked voice resonated in my dream like an echo. A few moments before I understood that I came from somewhere else and woke up with a jolt, disoriented. Um, the palpable feeling of urgency had immediately brought me to my senses, but it still took me a few seconds to recognize the advisor's voice, as well as the room I was in. Alden, what's going on? Your Highness, I bring terrible... Alden, you look you look really good. You look really good. But let's focus. Your Highness, I bring terrible news. Your father. Your father was assassinated last night. Assassinated. I knew they said my father died in the summary, but I was thinking like old age or something. Assassination? If he got assassinated, that means I'm next on the list. Does it not? Um... I was ready to hear just about anything. Imagine Crisis was an important part of royalty after all. And yet, I was completely stunned by the news. My father was dead. At the hands of an assassin. Just a few rooms away from me. Exactly. What you gonna do? All the implications from this revelation bounced through my head. Drenched in doubt and fear concerning my own security. And the future of the realm of Clidia. Alexander, you look like a model. <laughs> focus this is a serious situation this is a serious situation Lauren focus I beg your pardon your highness I did everything I could to save him but I was too late um pulling myself out of my lethargy I looked down at Alexander who knelt next to the bed his head bent low as if the weight of his shame stopped him from getting up whatever went down I knew he had nothing to be ashamed of. When I was a child, I already admired his talents, and they grew steadfast, with age and the position of general. His presence here was a relief. 
I didn't know the assassin's full intentions, but even if they were after me, as long as Alexander was by my side, I didn't have anything to worry about. <sighs> I'm still scared. Don't put yourself down like this. You aren't responsible for what happened. We'll bring the regicide... The regicide? To justice. Still mortified, Alexander stayed on his knees, but nodded in approval. Golly. Um, convinced by the strength in my voice. As for me, now that I had said it out loud, I felt the information that settled in my mind, and I finally accepted that as truth. With full understanding of the situation, Daddy's dead. My father, Magnus V? Or is that five? Anyway, the Emperor Clidia was dead. Dang, Daddy. Um, many would have broken down after hearing such news, but for years now, I had held an ounce of affection for him. Golly, his death was actually good news to me. Did you do it? Did you? Did you plan it? Look at you smiling. Um, it marked the beginning of a new era that I owe so desired since I learned where my destiny lay. I was to succeed him. I was to become the Empress. But it wasn't yet time for celebration. Although, I was a legitimate heir to the throne. I had plenty of detractors, and I still need to figure out why the assassination had taken place. I had many questions about the killer's identity and motivations. And am I next? Am I next? I was lost in thought, and it took me a while to realize that Alden and Alexander were staring at me worried. Surely awaiting a reaction or declaration from me. Both hadn't known me since my early childhood. They knew the enmity I felt for the Emperor, and I trusted them enough to set all the pretense aside. But it was perhaps a bit inappropriate to rejoice over my future title when my father's dead corpse was still warm. After taking a deep breath, I threw off my covers and got up, eyeing them. Um, uh, exult? No. Pretend to be sad. They know me too well. Stay neutral. Yeah. Yeah. What's this? Okay. So this is us. I think. Or is this the whole... I don't know. Anyway, these are some neighboring kingdoms. I don't know. Why are we in the forest? Is that a forest? Oh, 15 people, 15 nobility, 10 money. Yeah, I got $10 on me. 10 faith, 20 army, 10 resources, 10 influence. Okay, got it. We got a lot of water around this. Um, gloating seemed a tad indecent, but I could at least spare myself the pretense of being the grieving orphan that was surely you got no mama. Um, but I could at least spare myself the pretense of being the grieving orphan that I would surely need to be in front of the court. What I feel isn't important. You don't have to worry about me. What, mas what matters most is our nation, and we all know that the sudden death of the emperor is a delicate situation. Look at you smiling. At the moment, the most important thing is to preserve the kingdom's stability. I'm counting on you to protect and serve me. This won't be an easy task, but I'm sure we can accomplish great things. This time, Alexander got up, putting his hand on the sheath in a dignified and military posture. At your service, Highness, may the four witness my oath. I solemnly swear that I will protect you until my dying breath. Emphatic. Emphatic. Emphatic, he bowed down before lifting his eyes up to me. I smiled and accepted his allegiance with a certain poise, despite my unkept hair and my nightgown. Marjorie, my tutor, often told me that everything about me showed nobility. Yeah, you, you look very noble. I didn't need any props to act like an empress. Today, I understood what she meant. Alden, however, didn't seem to share the general's favor. Forgive me, your highness, for tarnishing your enthusiasm, but there's a very delicate question that I have to ask. What? Have you had your father killed? How dare you? His abrupt question threw me off, and I stared at him, wavering between surprise and indignation. Indignation. Yeah. How dare you even suggest such a possibility? You're going too far, advisor. Come on. 
Don't be offended. You said it yourself. You've hated your father since the death of your brother. You've always held him responsible for it. Mm, he right about that. And your father dies on the very day you return to the palace? Whatever your answer is, I'll accept it. But I need to know. You better watch your mouth, Alden. I felt anger rise within me at these words, and I walked to the window to breathe some fresh air. After I took a few deep breaths, I finally turned around to face him and gave my answer in a firm voice. On one hand, my presence here isn't a coincidence. The Emperor celebrates, or rather was about to celebrate, his birthday in two days. Half the Empire's noblemen are here. It's undeniable that the event presented the perfect opportunity to strike. The place is swarming with unknown guards and servants. It's much harder to provide security in these circumstances. Exactly. On the other hand, your suspicions are an insult to my intelligence advisor. After, after a regicide, the hair is always suspected. If I had really wanted to speed up fate, you better believe I would have been smarter about it. Marjorie taught me the rules of the game. I would never risk losing everything in such a foolish way. I know my ascension to the throne will already be difficult because I'm a woman. I'll say it plainly, if it can relieve your doubts. But listen closely, because I will not repeat myself. No, I did not have my father assassinated. How dare you? My eyes trained on him. I crossed my arms, almost daring him to contradict me, as I kept a lid on my fury. Alden seemed to gauge me for a moment, then nodded in assent, an apology. Mm. Please forgive me, your grace. No. At nightfall, I'll let the master of mummers, and we'll launch an investigation to uncover the truth and bring justice to your father. I would have preferred more vivid regrets, but under the circumstances, this was enough and I felt my anger slowly fade away. Mm, I'm still mad. I accept your apology. Let's not speak of this again. There are more urgent things to do. The news will, no doubt, make quite a commotion. You've asked me to swear allegiance to you. I assume you will try to claim your rightful place as heir, your grace. Of course. It's my spot. Yes, I've always wanted to become empress. In any case, I don't have a choice. Let's be honest, I'm ready. I want to become empress. I nod vigorously and didn't skip a beat before answering, chill. Yes, my father doesn't have a direct heir. I doubt the court will accept his bastards. And he has remarried since my brother's death. I've been preparing for this role for a long time. The day simply came earlier than I planned. So, were you going to kill him eventually <laughs> at some point? Lauren, at some point? There are many things I didn't agree with when my father ruled. Only time will tell, but I think I'll be a good empress. Uh, I mean, with, with me behind behind you? I don't think so. <laughs> At least not in the first playthrough. I don't doubt that, you Grace. In fact, I'm rather relieved to see you have already thought about it. Like you said, our country needs stability. We can't get away with a weak-willed monarch on the throne. Golly, Alexander. <sighs> I'm sure you'll be a wonderful Empress Lauren. Thank you, thank you. His words were barely a whisper, but I was sure of what I heard, and I felt my cheeks redden a little. Chill. He seemed embarrassed by his own boldness and blushed more violent than me. While I flashed a <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Look at him. Ooh. He seemed embarrassed by his own boldness and blushed more violently than me. Why, golly, he's so distracting. <laughs> he's so distracting. Golly, who just read. He seemed embarrassed by his own boldness and blushed more violent than me. While I flashed him a smile to reassure him. It has been years since I at last heard him call me by my name. Even if I had no doubts about my own ability. It was always refreshing to see the trust he gave me. I cleared my throat and regained my composure so I could give my orders. This would be a long night. Who else knows about the assassination for now? Alexander seemed surprised by my question and frowned a bit while searching his mind. When I found the body, I immediately went to warn the advisor and the both of us rushed out to see you. The only ones who know about it are the guards who are patrolling with me 
and your father's personal maids who are passing by. You know the maids can't keep their mouth shut? The whole kingdom knows now. Um, we knew it would be bad to attract attention, so I had her discreetly sent to the dungeon for interrogation. Good job, good job. How about the guards who were stationed before my father's door? Both are dead. I also had their corpse taken to the dungeon for examination. Good job, good job. <laughs> I paced the room, lost deep in thought. You've done well. Now you have to keep it all a secret. It's imperative that no one else hears about it. And she keeps smiling. Your Majesty, this won't be an easy secret to keep. Obviously. We won't be able to do that forever. I only need a few days, so I can stay ahead of my detractors. Alden looked thoughtfully for a few moments, then he nodded. I see. So you want to act before everyone else, which should give you the upper hand. Exactly. Very smart. I have no doubt that some people will want to take advantage of the situation, especially since you're a woman, which surely won't be to everyone's taste. Well, they're going to have to deal with it. Even if you are unquestionably the right heir, the rightful heir, your place will be fought over. But if you don't give them time to react, that makes things a great deal easier. That's what I was thinking too. I'd love it if the situation was more straightforward, but this is a little white lie. And the alternative is the chaos of a widely disputed succession. Alda nodded and I continued, developing the rest of my plan. In the meantime, pretend that His Highness is not feeling well, and investigate discreetly. I see. I'll order my men to stay silent. I'll also ensure that they haven't said a word so far. About that, it might be wiser to ensure that they can't talk at all. Off with their heads. Low-grade staff is known for gossiping. Even the guards. My men are trustworthy. They would never disobey. Uh, would you be willing to bet on that? If it could jeopardize the plan of your new empress, to whom you have only just sworn allegiance? Alexander, I want them dead. And that maid, can you also guarantee she'll keep quiet? His teeth clenched, his hand gripping the hilt of the sword. Alexander shook his head. The weight of Alden's words had also fallen heavily on my shoulders and I observed both men while contemplating my next step. This decision is yours to make your grace, but I strongly advise you to silence them for good. Alden was right. The most effective way to ensure someone stays quiet was to have them killed. However, there could be other alternatives to consider. Such a decision couldn't be taken lightly because whatever I decided, I couldn't afford to regret it. Wait, so which, what is, what are these? Um, so have them killed, we'll pretend that they were collateral damage of the assassin. I'm sorry, Alexander, but we cannot afford to take any risk. And ensure their loyalty by promising them a much better position was I'm, hmm. And ensure their loyalty by promising them a much better position once I'm crowned. Even if they were really tempted to talk about what happened, this should be good enough motivation to ensure their allegiance. When you explain to them that they mustn't say a word, give them a few coins and promise them more, nah, more once the secret had been revealed. And in the meantime, send them to the, mm, send them on vacation far away from here. That should be enough to guarantee their silence. What should I do? Should I have them killed? Send them away? Give them better positions. Off with their heads. <sighs> Murder solves everything. It was a heavy decision and I felt so nauseous. I discreetly leaned on the column of my canopy bed. I knew the responsibility of the Empress would lead me to a difficult choice, but I never thought I'd face them so quickly. Alexander straightened up and bowed. I will follow your orders. I'm sorry, Alexander. 
Hopefully they believe that the assassin did it. I don't know. I will follow your orders. You've made the right decision, Your Grace. But perhaps we should ask the Master of Murmurs to handle the situation. His eyes settled on Alexander, betraying his doubts that the general will be able to fulfill his duties. Do you really think I'm unable to kill Advisor? Oh, I'm aware that you've defeated your fair share of enemies, General. But this is about your men. Maybe even your friends. Exactly. They deserve for things to be handled properly. As bitter as his words sounded, his determination was unwavering, and I nodded. I trust you, Alexander, and I'm truly sorry to have to ask you that. Without further ado, he bowed once more and left the room with a heavy step. I'm sorry. Sorry about your friends. Alden seemed to be lost in thought for a moment, giving me time to come to my senses before he bowed down and turned. I must at least inform the Master of Murmurs of the situation, so that we can launch an investigation. I nodded, aware of our elite spy's discretion, as well as his efficiency. Once that is done, I'll come to you to plan the rest of your ascent. Once more, I nodded in approval, glad to be offered a little interlude that will allow me to gather my thoughts, and to dress decently while I was at it. After all, even the coronation hadn't taken place yet. Deep within me, I knew it. I felt it. I was the empress. Don't you mean we? After learning of her father's death, Lauren, supported by her advisors, decides to hide the emperor's demise by having the few servants aware of it assassinated. Oh. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have named her Lauren because I don't like that... <laughs> I don't like that associate with my name. I I sure did assassinate them, huh? Hmm. Do I even deserve this crown? I don't even know, y'all. She hopes that this reprieve will allow her to set the stage in secret so she can obtain the political support necessary for her coronation. Mm. Was that the right move, y'all? Should I have killed those people? I did say I was. I did say I was gonna roll with the iron fist. Okay, so it's actually a new day that I'm filming, and I thought about my choices. Maybe I was a little dramatic <laughs> with the whole killing the servants thing, because I realized that. I just sacrificed two of my army. <laughs> Dang. Uh, but it's okay. I was army. I had extra in army anyway. So overall. Yeah, you know. Because I picked army. I can, sac I can, sac I can sacrifice a little bit of army. So it's okay. But I was a little dramatic. I was a little dramatic with that. I could have just sent them on vacation. Let them have a good little time. Come back. By the time they came back, I was already gonna be. I was already gonna be um, empress. So I was a little dramatic. I'll admit. I'm sorry. Sorry to those people. Um, but they'll be okay. The sun had been up for a few hours, promising a beautiful day. But I knew I wouldn't be able to appreciate it because I'm working. I'm working hard right now. Now that the rush of adrenaline from the news had passed. All I had left were doubts on the days to come, which were going to be exhilarating as much as terrifying. I was gambling my future, along with Lydia, and that was a big deal. I'll say. I had spent the past few hours readying myself and refining the details of my plan to appease my lame nervousness as best I could, but that didn't help me shake off my main preoccupation, the servants. Uh, R.I.P. I wasn't proud of the decision I made, but I didn't regret it. All that was left was to hope that things had gone smoothly. Otherwise, it would make an already complicated situation even stick here, I'll say. I was tossing and turning when I heard a knock at the door. I leapt out of the bed and let Alden in. Is the job done, Alden? Did you talk to the, the, to the what's his name? Did you talk to the murmur guy? 
There, Your Grace. We have followed your orders. Thank you. Oh, you. Okay. Um, I just know you're handsome underneath that hood. Um, I hadn't seen that he was accompanied by a master of murmurs, who came in after him. A slight discomfort washed over me. His rule inside the palace was vital, but since I was a child, I had been terrified of his hidden face and the mysterious aura that surrounded him. I can't be scared no more. Uh, nevertheless, my discomfort turned into amazement when I saw him remove his hood as if it was nothing and turn to face me. I knew it. I knew it. I knew you were handsome underneath that hood. What did I say? My brain had pictured the worst for years, and it was very unsettling to finally be able to put a face to that man. I realized he wasn't as monstrous as I imagined. What's your name is? What's your real name? In fact, I was so shocked that it made me forget the reason for my visitor's presence, which seemed to greatly amuse the Master of Murmurs. Is there a problem, Your Grace? No, I'm good. Oh, it's just... I didn't know you could show your face. To be honest, I do what I want, but in principle, I only remove my hood in the presence of my southerner and their close collaborators. Though I like to entertain the mystery that comes with my job, it would be far too dangerous for me to never reveal my face. Some people might use that to take my identity. I, I see. Though it was disconcerting, it was also rather reassuring to see that a man as important as the Master Murmurs already acknowledged me as his sovereign. Alden cleared his throat to recall me to my duties, and I suddenly remembered the reason for the two men's presence, which immediately made my anxiety flare up. To keep myself from staring at the Master Spy, I faced the advisor and fully focused on him. Did everything go well? My worry was as obvious as my guilt but he gave me a reassuring smile. You have done the right thing, your majesty. And yes, it seems things went as smoothly as possible. Thank goodness. I, I'm sorry, Alexander. I'm so sorry about your friends. I feared Alexander might falter at a crucial moment, but his arms stayed true until the very end. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Alexander. Do you think, do you think he won't like me no more now? Like, do you think he'll still like me after this? Because I'm still... I'm still trying to get with him, but, like... Do you think that was kind of mean to me? A little bit? Yeah. Despite all that, it's still a bit early to be sure of anything. I gave the Master Murmurs and Alexander the task of keeping an eye, a close eye, on the situation. The Master Murmurs slowly nodded in assent. We'll know more tomorrow. But for the time being, there's nothing more to report. I lifted my eyes to meet my advisors and flashed Alden a reassuring smile. Clearly, he read my emotions better than I had thought, and I couldn't allow myself to visibly waver at such a critical time. I know that. And what's done is done. Now we must focus on the future. Bring the High Priest to the Council Room. I need him to contact the Quadrator. The Quadrator. The Quadrator. Something like that. Robert is a poison man. Are you sure it's a good idea to confide in him? Everyone likes to think the devout never lie, but one doesn't obtain a place like his without cheating a little. I admit that the idea of lying to him came to me for a fleeting moment, but to fool him would be a complex task, and I'll be needing his support when the time comes. The people put great stock in men with faith. Very well, Your Majesty. Will that be all? Yes, thank you. Ye. Um. Can I? Oh, hi, Robert. Um. Can I earn back army? <laughs> can I earn back resources? Or is this the set? And I gotta survive until the end with this. I mean, I'm not upset because I told you, because I chose army, I had extra army to give. Yeah, I haven't sacrificed my other people, my nobility, my money, my faith, my influence. Yeah, I'm good. 
I'm Gucci. You summon me, Your Grace? Yes. Thank you for coming, Robert. I gestured for him to sit down. Why I sat behind my father's imposing desk. Like I had predicted, my behavior made him lift a curious brow. But I pretended not to notice it. I won't be around the bush. My father, the Emperor, died during the night. Clearly, we had done a pretty good job of keeping that secret, since the shock on his face seemed genuine. What? But how? And why am I just learning about it now? I need to pray for his soul. No need to do that. We don't like him. I tried to appease him with a wave of my hand, and invite him to sit back down, since he looked like he was about to get up. He was murdered. For the time being, we're keeping his death a secret, so we can investigate without causing any sort of panic. It was the Master Murmur's idea. He's convinced that he'll be able to find an assassin more easily this way. Drowning information, the High Priest slumped in his chair and took in my half-truth by a student sad expression. It was a truly tragic situation. Keeping quiet and hiding my mourning is a very hard task for me. I know it's a lot to ask of you, but you need to keep this secret. I want to do everything in my power to uncover the murderer. Especially since I'm scared he'll come after me. Once more, I was quite proud of the quivering in my voice. And my acting seemed to be efficient since I saw a spark of compassion light up in his eyes. I understand now why the general was guarding your door like a common soldier. With a close expression on my face, I nodded, searching for the right words. The first and main reason I've summoned you here is so that I can confide in you and ask you to pray for my departed father's soul. Of course, Your Majesty. I'll lock myself up in the Great Temple and dedicate myself to the task. My face still sad. I gave him a tight, grateful smile. But inside, I felt relieved. His prayers should keep him busy enough that he won't be tempted to reveal anything. Now I can move on to the true reason of his presence here. But before that, this saddens me. But I have another favor to ask you. Of course, Your Grace. What is it? Well... Alden and I are afraid that all the upstarts across the kingdom will rush to the castle and try to take the throne as soon as my father's death is made public. In their greed, many forget that my line sits on the throne by the grace of the floor, so I'd like to send a letter to the quadrator and have him support my coronation, as well as have him reaffirm my legacy. Once more, he stayed silent, and I tried to hide my worry behind a veil of sadness. I hate that my plans depended on a single person, but I didn't have a choice. Only kings and high priests could hope to quickly reach the ultimate leader of the cardinals, and I technically wasn't the queen yet. I, I understand, yes. You're Magnus's only legitimate child. The throne should be yours, exactly. That said, I don't know if the quadrator, <laughs> that word, quadrator, will approve of those plans since you're a woman and an unwowed one at that. I mean, unwed. Why did I say unwowed? I felt my body tense up at his words, and it took all I had to conceal how irritated I was by his reminder. I knew I would be told such things. I had mentally prepared myself for it, but obviously, it hadn't been enough, because I'm angry now. It's an issue, yes, and I'll do my best to find a fitting king quickly. But you'll agree that I cannot entrust the throne of Calidia to just anyone. I have plenty of suitors, but I need some time to study each and every one of them. That's not something that can be done in just a couple of days or even weeks. In the meantime, we do need someone to lead the country and make sure it doesn't sink into chaos. And if a regent, regent were to be appointed, I'm afraid he might refuse to give the throne back to me and my husband, which will lead the whole country to a bloodbath. I want what's mine, Robert. I want what's mine. No one wants to see another era of murderous plots, like during Magnus III's, Magnus III's time. You're right, Your Grace. We cannot let such a tragedy befall us. I'll go write a letter to the corridor right away to express support for your coronation and explain our situation. Satisfied, I let out a sigh of relief. I thank you for your support, High Priest Robert. It means a lot to me. Swiftly, I open one of the desk drawers and pull out a thin silk letter. 
while I was waiting for you, I humbly wrote a few words destined for the quarterator. The quarterator. We've never met, and I hope this will help him get to know me a little, as well as reassure him of my faith in the four. I was thinking that perhaps you would be so kind as to add it to your own correspondence. Once more, he seemed to be caught off guard, but he smiled instantly, enthusiastically. Of course, Your Majesty. It's a great idea. Relieved, I gave him the letter in question while thanking him once more for support and his help in this unprecedented times. I only hope that he didn't have the audacity to break the seal, because even if it did contain a few cliches in my virtues, the letter mostly made promises that could actually motivate the quarterator. The quarterator, that word. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Mm, what's this? Okay. I knew that gold made the world go around, and so I promised a hefty donation to the great temple of the Four Meridian. Knowing his taste in luxury, I knew that he wouldn't be insensitive to a few more riches. I knew that he had a close bond with his nephew, a knight who had contacted, contracted a debt of honor towards my father, and who had been serving him for many years as repayment. Even if he was considered an asset to our army, I had promised that once I had been made empress, I would free him from his oath so he could go back to Meridian. Mmm, okay, so I'm actually feeling, like I said, I have army to give. That's three though. Well, I don't want to give him my money. I have little money. Like I said, I think, I think we'll give him back his nephew. That makes sense. To play with a man as powerful as the quadrator. I wasn't talking about his possible connections to the gods, but his actual worldly power it was a risky move, but it was all worth it. Yeah, I'm going to give his nephew back. Um, the dice have been cast. I could only hope for things to go well, and I prepared the field for my conquest of Colidian nobility. Despite my desire to act, for the time being, I couldn't do anything but wait for the quarter's answer. Where are you at? The library? Even if the letter had left that very morning, Meridian was very far away, and I knew I couldn't hope for an answer for at least three days. I had to chomp at the bit and act naive. My first thought was to mingle with the court so I could clear my head, but then, pretending that nothing was up and feeding rumors to justify my father's absence was more frustrating than doing nothing. Even Marjorie's presence irritated me, despite her advanced age. <laughs> advanced, that's the funny way to say it. Despite her advanced age. She old? As soon as she turned her inquisitive eyes on me, I had the impression she managed to perceive the truth. And so I had taken refuge in the library, hoping to read a little, but in honesty, even if I had managed to unscramble a few words, my thoughts were very far away, and my mind was repaying, replaying the events of the previous night. Dang, daddy is dead. Daddy is dead. Asking myself again and again if I had done the right thing. Ooh, hi, Alexander. How you doing? Uh, your grace. May I speak with you for a moment? Are you mad? Surprised, I lift my eyes to see Alexander. Worry overtook me at once when I saw how somber his expression was. Despite my urgent need to know what was going on, I gently placed the book on my knees to show him that he had my full attention and looked at him with composure. Erwin's widow came to me yesterday. Oh. What she say? My mind searched the immense pool of names I knew, but no recent deceased nobleman with that stern name came to mind. Girl, because you kill. <laughs> it's the guy you killed yesterday. Frustrated with my lack of knowledge, I pouted, feeling like a little girl who didn't study for assessment. Who is, or rather was, this Irwin? 
nothing comes to mind. And I know every name that the nobility wears in. One of the guards I assassinated for you. Dang. He has said with perfect neutrality, but the violence in his words felt like a punch to the stomach. For a second, I felt my expression falter from the shame of not knowing that name, as well as the worry that someone might have listened in. But Alexander was no fool. A quick glance around the library reassured me there was no one there for the two of us. Sheepish, I lowered my eyes while I gathered the courage to face what was about to come. As Empress, I have prepared myself to sacrifice lives for the good of my kingdom. From time to time, even innocent lives. I don't know about that one. But it was a lot easier when they were just vague job titles in my mind. Not people. With names and a wife. What did she want? Despite my best efforts, I had managed to get my emotions fully under control. I hadn't managed to get my emotions fully under control. But I knew I could allow myself that kind of weakness in front of him. Especially since he shared my sadness and my guilt. She was worried about him. She wanted to know why he hadn't come home yesterday afternoon. Oh, that hurts. The master of murmurs ordered me to act as if I knew nothing and to say that he had left his station in the morning as planned. But I couldn't. On top of my guilt, a dull anxiety washed over me. Alexander was an idiot, but the need to relieve his conscience of his crime, of my crime, must have been strong. Alexander. Don't worry. I didn't tell her the truth, thank goodness. I could never defy your orders, especially if I knew that it could cause you harm. But... Ah, dang. But she's pregnant up to her eyes, and I couldn't let her think that her husband had abandoned her and had run off, so I pretended he was on a special mission for the Emperor. Oh, that hurt. His revelation relieved me for an instant. Before the weight of my sin grew even heavier, a name, a wife, and a child soon to be. Um, but I didn't have time to linger on my feelings. If Alexandra had come to me with such a worried face, face, that must have meant that there was more to it. You did well. It's a good excuse. And it's not a complete lie either. In a way, he died for the good of Lydia. <laughs> did he really, though? Alexander nodded solemnly. The only issue is that these kinds of missions come with extra wages. If we stick with this version of the facts, we will have to pay the widow once her husband's death has been made official. I admit, I was not familiar. I admit I wasn't familiar with that kind of steward's consideration at all. But it makes sense. It does. But I only have ten monies. <sighs> Maybe I should talk. Oh. You know, I don't know why I'm worrying so much. This is just a demo. I'm not going to act like this in the real version. I will be a loving and considering queen. I will actually send them on vacation. This is just a trial. You know, this is just... I'm just preparing myself, you know? Um, you've done well. It's the least I could do. I'll pay. My money's... He seemed relieved, as for an instant. I wonder if he had come up with an excuse on purpose, so that the widow could have an additional nest egg. Nest egg? In any case, it was the best thing I could do. I would gain nothing from knowing whether he had or had thought that far. Thank you, Your Grace. I knew you'd understand. Before leaving the room, he gave me a look filled with adoration. Uh, which only served to reinforce my guilt. Even if things haven't gone exactly as planned, I could be reassured that nothing serious had happened and hope that this would last until the corridor's reply. That word is killing me, ain't it? It's kicking my butt. I say it differently every single time. The corridor. The quadrator. The quadrator. Your Grace, this is a little premature, but should you become Empress, you will need to manage the kingdom's policies. I'll have to make sure you're ready for that task. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> I wasn't listening. Policies, policies. 
Yeah, because you weren't familiar with the other policy. Well, the cash thing that Alexander just said, so. I don't want to go through a tutorial. Fine. Maybe I'll cut this out. <laughs> okay. I got it. Basically, it's a lot. <laughs> Basically, I really am running a nation. I mean, an uh, empire. I gotta tax the people, nobility. I gotta worry about trade. I gotta worry about open borders. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to protect us. And I don't want to upset anybody by having high taxes. But you know, let's tax the rich. I don't know. We'll, we'll try it, though. But this ain't real, right? This is just pretend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because those aren't my actual numbers. The people will understand, and you'll receive a moderate amount of money. People will be angry, but money will flow endlessly. Yeah, yeah, moderate's fine. Offering. You will help finance a good part of the temple. And, you know, I thought we are all agreed that churches should not, you know. That churches should not be a separation of, what's it called? Sep separation of church and state? Separation of church and power? I thought we all agreed on that. I Can I not? But then also says academics. And we need to give the, we need to, teach people separation of church and state y'all separation of church and state oh I don't want to lose my people though but people like the church so should I sacrifice the money my people love their church especially in these times that's all they got trade Well, this is all fake. This is all fake. So, um. No bill. I'll get more nobility, money. Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can lose two resources. We'll get more money. But if anything goes down, I'm restricting it. I'm restricting it. Um. The con will be forced on the, what? Oh. Farming. Farming's good for the people. Man, nobody can afford luxury items. Farming's good for the people. Um, maintain. You will properly maintain your current army. Yeah, sure. We need protection. I will send at least one ambassador to each neighboring country. Mm, no. We'll keep it cordial. We'll have at least... No, no, no. That's like scary. I don't want a whole group of people going someplace. That's gonna scare them. Cordial, keep it cordial. Yeah, 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 I'm good at this. Let's see, let's see what I got. I still got 10 people. I got plus 10 people, plus five nobility. No money. <laughs> In fact, I lost money. Um, Three in faith, one army, one resource, two, yeah. It's the people that matter, right? It's the people that matter at the end of the day. How'd I do? Now let me check if that was real or not. Why are you yelling so early in the morning? I don't know if that was real. Look at my money. Oh, wait. No. 
no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. The money was from the widow. Yeah, I'm good. I'm Gucci. Your Highness. Why are you so loud? Don had barely risen when I heard a kerfuffle at the door, and I immediately recognized Robert's voice. Oh, yeah, uh, the priest. I got up with a groan and quickly slipped on the dress, trying to make myself presentable before opening the door. What do you want? Hi, priest. What's going on? I tried to remain as neutral as possible, but I was burning up with a mixture of anxiety and excitement. Oh, he's back with the letter. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the next day. <laughs> I'm filming another day. Because I had a solid guess as to what this was about. So, how about my coronation? Am I, am I queen? The quarterator. He answered, your majesty. What do you say? Nervous. He handed me two letters, bearing the recognizable seal of his holiness. What did I say? Your name is written on them. I, I didn't dare open them, your highness. Thank you, thank you. Exhilarated, I looked at the two pieces of paper that were about to seal my future. One seemed official, while the other was explicitly from my eyes only. Okay, okay. I would have liked to be alone when reading them, but no, go away. You want to be all in my business, Robert? What's your bald head? I would have liked to be alone when reading them both, but clearly, it has taken Robert all he had not to break the wax seal on the official letter. He now stared at me impatiently. My throat was dry as I grabbed a paper cutter to open the correspondence, and my heart was beating so fast I had the impression everyone in the room could hear it. What'd it say? Lady Lauren of Treneville. Oh, I nailed that. Daughter of Magnus V of Tren Trenil. Trenil? Tren oh, I forgot already. The fierce emperor of Clidia. Before I've spoken, I have recognized you as the legitimate heir of the crown of Clidia by virtue of your blood and despite your gender. That's what I like to hear. By this decree, I convey the words of the gods. May your governance be respected by all the just and the poise. So I got the job. I got the position. May your rule prosper and never stray from the fourth faith. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. I got the job, y'all. I got the job. I was shaking so hard. I felt my legs give in. And I had to sit on my bed so I didn't fall over. Girl, you did it. And all you had to do was kill some servants. Light work. I had done everything in my power to make this moment happen. But now that it was upon me, I was engulfed by all the emotions I had accumulated in the past week. Um... Robert seemed to understand me, and bowed to leave me a few long seconds so I could take in the corridor's words. Finally, he spoke up. That's marvelous, Your Majesty. I knew the four would acknowledge your legitimacy. Almost timidly, I nodded, and tried to cover my usual composure. With the quarterator's support, my coronation was sure to happen, but that didn't mean I was rid of enemies or other contenders. I couldn't let my guard down yet. Yes, the time has come for everyone to know the truth. Gather the nobles in the castle at dawn and prepare the pigeons. Yeah, get them pigeons. Get them pi bring, bring them pigeons to me. Bring them pigeons to me. <laughs> I'm hype. He nodded, a grave expression on his face. Yes, we can't wait any longer. The secret of your father's death couldn't have been kept indefinitely. In any case, it's true that his absence has been going on for a while. And a possible illness worried people just as much as a possible death. Um, it was fortunate that these letters hadn't taken too long to arrive. I'll, I'll be there. I need to finish getting ready. Of course, Your Majesty. I'll have the bells rung. But at such an early time, I don't suppose we can gather everyone in less than an hour. I approve of the polite nod, and soon I watched him leave and close the door. Girl, get hyped, get hyped, jump on that bed. Uh, finally, on my own, I collapsed on the bed and let myself gloat. I whooped in pure childish joys as I read the quarter, quarter, letter over and over again. I knew that I had plenty of challenges ahead of me, but this was my first victory against traditions, 
and I intend to savor it for as long as I could. We did, we did it. We did it. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for us. I'm happy for me. Only after a few long minutes had passed, I decided to open the second letter, which was addressed to me personally. What'd that say? Lady Lauren of Treneville, as much as I appreciate your gesture, I don't appreciate the opinion you seem to have of me. My acts and my words are guided by the four themselves, and I don't exchange blessings for favors. I hope you remember that in the future. So you said forget your, forget your nephew. Got it. I got with a sigh and held the parchment over a candle long enough for it to catch fire before throwing it into the cold fireplace. Even if he denied it, I was convinced that my little inten- attentions had played out in my favor. Um, he just wanted to reaffirm the ethics behind which he hid. Mm, okay, so he's being fake. But all the powerful people in the world knew he was a man appreciative of small favors, and that not doing him any could end up causing one harm. So he's not a good guy, really. Uh, now it was the court I had to sway, and I knew this wasn't going to be an easy task. Hey, it's almost, it's almost my birthday. Now, who is you? Oh, you must be, uh... Mariah? No. Melanie? No. Marion? No. Mary? Something. Make sure not to overexert yourself, Lauren. You're spending your days locked up in this office. You should get out of bed and clear your head. Come take a walk with this old lady. Marjorie! I was close. I knew it started with an M. I had left the door open, and although I hadn't heard Marjorie come over to me, I wasn't surprised, since her perfume, which she applied too liberally, had filled the room. I almost felt nostalgic for a moment. Even if it made me happy to see her, my presence in my office wasn't guided by fun. I was overwhelmed with invitations, requests, promises. I spent the past three days flattering, flattering the clarity and ability to ensure that nothing would jeopardize my coronation in three weeks' time, and I still had a lot left to do. Oh, perhaps you can fool everyone else, but I know you're far from being an old lady, Marjorie. My reply makes her laugh, a hoarse and joyous sound that I believe what I had just said. Oh, I still have the same quick wit I had when I was 20. But I'm afraid my whining, my whining bones disagree with you, sweetheart. Come on, don't be cruel. You already broke my poor heart when you didn't let me in on the secret. You know, I had to, I had to make my moves in secret, really. You know? Um, I put my quill down with a sigh and closed the inkwell, hoping its contents would not dry out. She had taught me many things, and even if I had grown stronger than her in a few areas, it was obvious that she still used guilt like no one else. She almost made me feel bad for hiding my father's death from her. You know full well I didn't have a choice. The information had to be disclosed to a few people as possible. I know, I know, sweetheart. But I would have liked to be there for you. These past few days mustn't have been easy. No, they weren't indeed. You know what? I think... I think we got a good feel for the game. I like it. Especially the um the kingdom running part. This game would be really fun to do on stream, you know, if I had to get to do a stream. <laughs> um, I told you streams have me nervous. Um because of all the decisions, like you can literally decide to kill a character if you don't like them. Because you're you're Empress. You're Empress. You could be like, I don't like this character, literally off of their head. Y'all saw what I did? That's not good though. I I do, after three days of reflection, after three days of reflection, I probably should have just sent them on vacation. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's been a long video. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Um, thank you again to the creator for reaching out to me. Um, good job. 
I, I like your game. Cool game. I like your game. <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on my social media. It's always below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.